Welcome back to Elden Ring Ultimate Guide Part 12. Today it's Ansel River. If this is the first time you've watched any of these guides, I recommend you watch the video linked in the description. But otherwise, we're going to Ansel River. So we already got the grace here. We've already been down that this lift. So um, I guess that's maybe a little bit jarring. I'm sure you can use the map, see where we're going. It should be pretty obvious. This was to just save time. Um, so I on that bit of the map, there's a little structure. There is a lift that leads down to this area. Hopefully that's good enough for you. But, um, aye, if you've got any tips of your own, put them in the pinned tips comment. But otherwise, we just picked up some magic grease. And uh, we have uh, equipped some fire bombs. Uh, although, this was just to show that the fire bombs actually do, like, okay damage against these things. Uh, I mean, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Fire pots, rather. Um,. So as a result, Blood Flame Blade also probably quite good against them. Uh, so I don't really know why I used the Light Fire Armor. Uh, but Light Fire Armor is also doing pretty good damage. Though. Oh, there's a good reason you'd use Light Fire Armor and not Blood Flame Blade. So, in the water. Because you're, yeah, because you're standing in water, enemies who are wet, quote unquote, take 20% additional damage from lightning, but 20% less from fire. So you'd be better off using Electrify Armament down here. Well, that makes sense. That does make sense. I fucking no idea where that ant came from. Tiny little yeah. alcove off to the side. Although there is one that ambushes you in a little bit, and I genuinely think that thing just appears out of nowhere. Because I've so, never figured out where the fuck it comes from. <laughs> Seriously, that's a like, look at it around. Easy to take you care go, of. This is it. You go down here, there were no ants. You kill this one ant, you pick up the item, you turn around. And then a fucking ant appears, and I have no idea where it comes from. Wait for it. Wait. I... Wait, that actually came out of the ground. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Where the fuck? <laughs> Look at it. Where the fuck did you come from? <laughs> Insane. So, again, Aslam paying dividends. The best investment you'll ever make. And it's literally free. You just kill a scarab. Yeah. It takes it was, like 10 it's... seconds and you get the best Asher War in the first like two thirds of the game. <laughs> yeah. So aye, uh, the katanas doing light work so the ants can be bled, they can be flattened, which means they can die efficiently. So we're just heading down here, we're just picking up the fucking shite off the floor. Uh, nothing to be particularly interested so far. Somber Stone 3, yeah we'll take that. So now we're just heading all the way to the end of, uh, yeah, so I spent, I went the wrong way, so actually you want to go down this way first. Um, so I, I just, uh, it, the, the cut was a bit weird, so I thought it'd be better to speed it up and make it a bit clearer. So I don't go down that big long platform, go this way towards this sort of um, pool bit with a wall. Dam area, I guess you could call it. And uh, I think we picked up some arrows, and that's what that was. Yeah, there were some arrows down there. I think the game calls this a sluice gate. It's just a made-up word. Think. You made that word up right there on the spot. I so very here, much didn't. So here's another grace. We're going to get that. And now I think we're going to head back to where we were. Yeah, I think we go back the way because you can approach the area that you would access from the Grace via lift. You can approach that from the top and you get some additional items for doing so. So, Aye, aye. So this is like the long way and indeed we're going to take the long way because it's better. Uh, I mean, this area is pretty small, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I don't think any of will be having a particularly hard time. I really wish the fire pots killed these things in one hit. Um, do we have the fire scorpion charm at this point? I don't think we do. No, you get that a, a little bit later. So this thing, yeah. No, that's magic. Um, fire's oh. in for live on Volcano Manor. Oh. Uh, on well, Mount Gelmy. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe, uh, um, a golden vow would make that do more damage, maybe. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, probably. If you uh, hit that thing's arse, it drops a golden rune 10 and a rune arc. All the ants that have a big butt will drop a rune arc and a big rune. For some reason. So like, now we are up above 
where that lift would have taken us. So uh, go down here and I stone sword key. Ah, Smith is on four. Stone sword key. Ah. <laughs> as we'd said in an earlier part as well, you can take the Celestial Dew to the Church of Vows, where Muriel, the Turtle Pope, was. Um, and if you have killed an NPC or attacked an NPC and they're now angry at you, um, you can become absolved of your sins by trading a Celestial Dew to the Statue of the Nox Priestess in the Church of Vows. Aye. So again, we're just picking up some glove warts, some very... Some very low golden rim ranks here. Um, yeah, this area is... Uh, we're probably actually over-leveled for this part, but we just figured we'd do it all the earn first, rather than doing Ansel River halfway through Leornia East. I guess we could have done all the Leornia East and then came here. It kind of just doesn't matter, um, because you barely get anything from doing this area anyway. <laughs> That's true, but this is the first place you encounter the Claymen. Do they have more drops than just their weapon? That's true, but that is the Claymen. Uh, so, so the, um, the Claymen can drop nothing. <laughs> they drop they can drop the Clayman's Harpoon. They can drop. Oh, I was looking at the wrong bit. Yes, the Clayman's Harpoon and the Silver fly Firefly, and that is it actually for right. all, the, all the drops in this area so you can see they were being pelted with purple rocks um there is a enemy called a malformed star hanging off of the ceiling um in the little temple that's just over to the right there i think we get a look at it in a second um but that enemy will intermittently shoot these purple rocks at you and you just need to use the environment as cover um, it's kind of similar to what we've done in the frenzy village actually um Almost identical yeah, in the yeah. process, except you can't tell where you're being pelted from, but, but when it comes to the Frenzy Village anyway. Now, Aslam's actually fairly good against these guys, but um, they're very, very slow. So, so as a result, we're just choosing to not fight them because it's faster. I mean, honestly, it'd just be a waste of FP. Yeah, like. essentially. Uh, now, you could use the bow to very slowly whittle this thing down that's pelting us, but again, kind of no need. Just hide it behind the rocks. Be, it can also be poisoned, so if you had poison arrows or something something similar to that. We did pick up some serpent arrows in an earlier part. Those deal a um, pretty effective style of poison. You can buy an infinite number of them later in the game, but you can poison this and kill it early, but you don't really get anything from it. So. Nah. Uh, later on in the game, we do come back here. This is another part to Angel River, and it kind of coincides into this part, and then we can just kill this thing that's pelting us rocks very, very easily at that stage. But otherwise, I think it's just more of a hassle killing this thing than uh, just running past it and grabbing everything, honestly. Yeah, speaking of grabbing everything, I hope you've been following along with the items we're picking up and the route that we've taken. It's fairly straightforward, there's not a lot to grab here. But um, hopefully the video's done a good job of showing you where the items are and indeed what they are. Aye. Now we just bought two cookbooks off that merchant. Again, just to reiterate, if you kill merchants, they will drop their bell bearing. You can give that bell bearing to the twin maiden husks in the round table hold, and then she'll sell everything the merchant was selling. Uh, the merchants are surprisingly tanky, actually. Like, shockingly so. Uh, but in our runs for the ultimate guides, we don't kill NPCs. So, um, unless it's like he's bad or like... With no NPCs will die unless they're red, is kind of the rule, I suppose. Um, but otherwise, we are following uh, this river down. <laughs> Better dead than red. Uh, Aye. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just another room with ants. That's largely what Ansel River is. Okay, there's not a whole lot to say for this particular area. Nah, not Drops really. equipment. There's just a bunch of glove warts on the ground and just various trash, a few smithing stones. There is the immunizing horn charm that we did pick up, which will increase your resistances. That is a talisman, actually, so that's pretty good. Um, if you need a little bit of a status resistance boost. And now these are basilisks. So this is, yeah, this is the first time we've encountered basilisks, I believe. Um, uh, yes. They can inflict 
death blight on you, so they produce this cloud of black gas. If you stand in the gas for too long, that bar will fill up and you will just instantly die. It's a really cool yeah. animation, so it's worth seeing at least once, but you'll probably see it later to a worm face. But uh, these things don't actually have any melee attacks, so yeah, largely the strategy is just walk towards them and hit them if you need to kill them. Or just run past them, but you really don't want to get, like, ganged up on because uh, it would appear that all their clouds kind of stack. So if two of them shoot a cloud at you, it will doubly increase the bar rather than just, like, you're in the vet cloud and you will take tech of damage if you're in the cloud. It just it does seem to stack. Or it yeah, does have one... a perception of it stacking. <laughs> Yeah, there's one section later where that stacking becomes really apparent. Like there's there's a section in one of the other underground areas where if you're oh, if yeah. you're there and your death light resistance isn't good, you will just die. <laughs> now you, you also saw us right on the edge of that cliff overlooking that big red swampy area. That's the Lake of Rot. That is a much later game area, but also an underground area. But now we're coming to the boss. And this boss is like kinda cool, I suppose. Um, but nothing we can't handle, nothing the imps aren't going to systematically destroy. So we're going to take a Physic Flask, we are going to put on Golden Vow just to get a wee bit extra defense, a wee bit extra damage, and then we're going to summon the imps when we can, and then just start hitting this thing, I suppose. Um, I'm pretty sure we use Blood Flame Blade for this guy, I think. Or we actually use Electrify Armin, because again, he's in water, so I'm going to take advantage of that. That being said, this boss is actually resistant to lightning. Um, so it's not your best option for damage, but it is an option for damage because obviously any extra damage is extra damage. Uh, as um, you can see, it takes respectable damage from our arse though, so that's uh, what we're going to try and do. Now, you also, you actually for the most part want to be up this thing's arse. Um, again, the, the, the imps are very good at taking the heat off you and thus you're able to get to its arse, but it does have a bunch of AoEs like this. So when it does that, get the fuck away from it. Um, because it does electric damage and it is in water, so you will be taking increased electric damage from fighting this thing. But also its electric mm. damage puts frost on you as well. It's quite interesting in me. Yeah, I was just about to mention that actually. This is one of the enemies that can inflict frostbite on you, so if that bar fills up, you will take a burst of damage, and then you will continue to take increased damage while ever Frostbite is active on you. Aye. So, um, I mean, this thing really isn't, like, too hard. It takes, like, at this point in the game, we're doing really solid damage to it, and, uh, the, yeah, that, this is kind of it. Just hit it. Just stay in its arse and hit it. We get Frozen Lightning Spear for killing that thing. However, we are going to show you some extra footage of us uh, fighting that thing. Now, how's Frozen Lightning Spear? Have you ever tried that? Uh, Frozen Lightning Spear is not bad. It has a sort of cone area of effect, so you throw one at the floor and it produces a bunch of other little lightning bursts around it. Um, each hit will inflict a, an amount of frostbite buildup, so it's not bad versus big targets that you want frostbitten. If they're weak to frostbite and they're weak to lightning, it's not a bad option, but Generally, it's not great PvP-wise, um, and it's niche at best in PvE. So you have better options, but it is something fun at the very least. So here we are using Blood Flame Blade this time. Um, we actually got some good ticks of bleed damage in there, um, and Blood Flame Blade com comboed with the, uh, the imps will be doing a ton of bleed. As you can see, they just go to town on it whilst um, we're just able to dodge its attacks. Admittedly, this thing's attacks do kind of kill the imps quite efficiently, but given where we're fighting this thing, we shouldn't really have too big, a, a, too big an issue. Um, I think, I think, given the amount of damage that we're doing and the amount of damage we're taking, you're quite easily able to just trade hits into this thing. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So we got a great ghost glove war out the chest, which we used to fully upgrade um, one of our uh, spirit ashes. So that's pretty cool. We will be using that one. I think we use that for the mimic tier. I think. Um, yeah, so I think so. Now go and upgrade your weapons if you can. But otherwise, I guess we couldn't have at this point. So we are going to uh, level up. We got our endurance to twenty-five, which means we are now leveling up our vigor. And we should be getting to uh, 45 Vigor, 40 Endurance. That is the goal. And that is it for part 12 of Elden Ring Ultimate Guide.
And okay, there we go, that's Ainsel River done. Join us in part 13, where we're going to be doing Rail Lucaria. Now, other than liking and subscribing, you can follow us on Twitter, you can also follow us on Twitch, where we will be streaming once the DLC is out, and if you're feeling especially generous, you can sling us some cash on Patreon if you're so inclined, but the best thing you can do is just comment anything. Just comment anything! Go on. Anything. Two seconds. Go on. Anyway, catch you in the next part.